let's look at the basic setup for making a particle system in Bifrost. Um, so I'm just going to do my usual uh, platonic solid. Um, I'm, the only thing I'm going to do different here is I'm just going to change it to triangles like that. I don't, don't know anything to begin with, but I'm going to put the subdivisions up to about 20. Uh, so we've got quite a lot of subdivisions. Um, just be really wary if you have this at quads and you put the subdivisions to 20, it will crash your machine. It it's, calculates it in a highly dense way compared to triangles. Um, I'm just doing it like this because I just want quite a lot of vertices, so I'm doing it like that. Uh, and I might make it five to be, begin with. Let's just and then we'll close that. Right, so um, let's create a new graph. So if I had that selected and I go create graph, it immediately puts it in there in the input, which I'll just do. And I'm just going to tab basic particle graph. And the first thing we have to do with these is explode them. So we get that. And we've got the sort of usual stuff we've seen before with the arrow. We've got simulate particles, source particles, glider, and particle solver settings. Right, so first thing we do is we just link up the geometry to that. So that's going to be our emitter. And we can link up our particles to our output we get some particles let's just move this over a bit and if I hit play they'll just all fall down and you see it's pretty quick I mean this actually by default is set to only lift for two seconds so they do die very quickly um, so let's go and have a look at some of the settings So in the source particles, we've got similar stuff we've seen before. Um, all the general stuff about start and stop, we don't need to worry about that. Distribution, volume, or surface. So if I go volume, and I go four, you can now see they're sort of being emitted all through the object. If I go surface, just on the surface. I'm just gonna leave it at surface to find for the time being. Um, we do have a volume detail size. Even though there's not voxels in particles, there's points in space. Um, the way that Bifrost works is it does voxelize emitters regardless, and the same goes for colliders. They'll have, they are voxelized, um, which is good and bad. When it's good, it's very tolerant of bad mesh, but is a little bit slower than other sort of colliding things and emitters things. So you've got to be a little bit careful uh, playing around with that number because you don't really need it to be any smaller than that really because they're on the, they're pretty much on the surface so it's fine um right so next bit obviously is rate so if you see crank that up get more you can do it as a density like that so it's all over the surface or you can do it as a count per point uh, if i rewind that you'll see and that will basically emit from every single vertice at a rate of a thousand. If I do that to one, um, is it doing it all the way on, on every one? It's actually not on every one. It might be because of the way the voxelized surface works. But be careful because if you do do that, you're basically timesing this rate by how many vertices it's being emitted from. So I'm just going to leave that to count. And you see, we just got it down set to one now. So it's just one there. Look. Um, Let's put that back to 100. <clears throat> so we've got some more in the particle properties, basic stuff, speed. So uh, speed is they're going to be moving. Um, at the moment, they don't have any direction, but they have this normal speed, which will, uh, let me see if I put it up to 10, will force them outwards along the normal of the object, which is basically the direction of the face. So basically outwards from all over. Um, so if we put that down to thingy to zero, they'll just fall because because gravity by default is on. Um, let me just go into gravity. Let's turn it off because it makes it a little bit easier to look at these settings. So in the particle solver settings, I'm just going to turn off gravity. So back to the particle 
source, rewind, and it play. Nothing's going to happen because I've turned off normal speed. I'll put that back on. So we've got. Um, let's do something like. Let's turn off this normal speed and put a direction on it. So X, Y, and Z are these. It doesn't sort of state it, but that's what they are. And then if you play, it's going to. Oops. Move out in that direction. Um, so at the moment, they're only got an age limit of two seconds. So I put live forever on. Oh, they won't die, and they'll just go out that way. Like that. So this next one spread basically it sort of emits them out in a sort of cone like shape. So if you do one, you'll see it. Actually, that goes back to sort of that. Actually, let me try 0.5. There we go, you sort of actually turn that point to point one, get more of a sense of it in the direction. So you see they're sort of going outwards more. Um, point two. There we go, so you see they're spreading outwards. Um, I don't know if you can do minus numbers at point one. Will they go inwards? No, it ignores that, it just goes outwards. Okay. Um, so that's the sort of basic particle settings. Um, quickly have a look at the solver. So mass start frame, we've seen that before, gravity, substeps. Now, you don't get substeps in, uh, or do you? Actually, I'm gonna make that false claim. Um, substeps are quite good if you've got fast moving particles. Um, you can get them quite, especially if they're going around in a circle, they can get quite jaggedy edged wise um, if they're moving very quickly because each frame is calculated so if they're moving like quite a long distance per frame you always get straight lines so substeps adds more iterations into that um, we'll maybe look at that later actually I can probably show you something so this one had substeps of one and could have benefited of, from having more Especially, oops, caps um, Especially if you look, say, somewhere like there. Let's zoom into that. These, this sort of banding we're getting here, substeps would help soften that. So that's basically every other frame. So the banding here we can get sort of that would slightly be smoothed out if you up the substeps. Um, so let's go back to Maya. Uh, so simulation speed. We can you know, make it quicker or slower as our overall control. Um, we've got self collisions, we can turn those on so they'll collide with each other. Spin on collisions, collision spin, the amount. Viscosity we can add, which will add basically a sort of thickness to it. Uh, da -da -da. High values create stiff materials, basically when combined with stop steps. Um, so it makes it more treacly. Um, store self collision stores, surface collisions. Um, I've not looked into those yet, they're new. So uh, in fact, are they so new they don't even have a little bit of blurb about them? Do they sell collisions? Yeah, doesn't really tell you why you want to store those. Um, so the important one down here, apart from turning gravity off and your sub steps, and if you wanted self collisions, is this particle shape. So we can change the shape of the particles. So default sphere, you can have points, tiny little points, uh, disks, which are little disks. If you have those on, it's best to turn on the face camera. So they're always facing the camera. Um, I did all of these simulations using disk as a rendering. Um, and yeah, we've got other ones. We've got circles, quads, little disks, square disk cubes, and spheres. And if you wanted numeric, probably won't show anything there. Um, so let's go back to disks. And simulation bounds, we talked about before. If you make a big cube, 
when you put it around it cover in it won't simulate beyond those points right so that's a quick basic look got the same sort of stuff for colliders um, and that's a sort of basic setup of particles